All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ronnie Show, and I'm the Supervisor for Communications and Engagement with WJCC Schools. We're so excited to have you all joining us this evening, and welcome to WJCC Schools. We'll be covering information about several topics, including registration, health information, transportation, student meals, sample schedules, and, and what you can do over the summer to prepare your, your little one. We're also going to be sharing several QR codes um, throughout the presentation, so you can scan those and it'll take you to some more information and resources, um, as well as we will share those information, that same information in an email to you after the presentation. So if you're not able to scan those uh, QR codes in time, don't worry, we'll get that information over to you. Um, we will also be using Zoom's Q&A feature, so if you have any questions throughout the presentation, just feel free to go ahead and add those questions in the Q&A, um, and we will have some time at the end of the presentation to answer those questions. If we happen to run out of, some, out of time, we will do our best to address those questions after the fact, either directly with you or through our email that we send afterwards. We have many individuals from across the, de the departments and services in our school division joining us here tonight. And this just highlights the collaborative effort it takes to support our youngest learners and our newest families. So let's get uh, started and we'll quickly go through some introductions and there we go. Hi everybody, my name is Courtney Poffpar and I am the Family and Community Engagement Specialist for WJCC Schools. Hello, my name is Beth Wells, and I'm the school nurse at Matthew Whaley Elementary School. Hello, I'm Louisa Johnson, and I'm the school um, health supervisor for Williamsburg James City County Schools. Good evening, I'm Robin Ford. I'm the director for elementary curriculum and instruction. Good evening and welcome, everyone. I'm Susan Gardner, and I'm in um, charge of records. And good evening, everyone. I am Christy Turner, and I am a registrar here in the um, WJCC. So um, I'm here to again talk about registration. So when it comes to registration, there are a few steps in getting your child uh, registered for the kindergarten for the 24-25 school year. But first, you want to make sure ensure they are eligible. So uh, to enroll a kindergarten, a child must be five years old on or before September 30th. And for any of our current Bright Beginning students who will attend kindergarten next year, uh, must complete the online pre-registration process for their zone kindergarten school. So to start the registration process, you must complete the online pre-registration process. Um, online pre-registration may be completed on any computer with internet access. A uh, parent view account will need to be established to start the registration process for any future WJCC students. If you already have a child or have children in the WJCC schools, then you would just need to log into your parent view account to start that process. Um, throughout the process, information may be saved and returned to repeatedly to complete the pre-registration. And as you can see, you can definitely scan this QR code to start that process at any time. Once you complete the online pre-registration, the next step is to provide the required documentation. This can be done by scheduling an appointment with your zone school to bring in the documentations, or you will have the opportunity to provide all this information at the Family Fest. So what are the required documentations? So the, they are, um, we have to see a photo ID of the parent or guardian. That could be a driver's license, a DMV issued ID card or a passport. We would need to see the certified copy or an affidavit of a birth certificate. We would need to see the current immunization records, the physical exam records. And then we also have to see two current proofs of residency. So the first one would be a lease or a mortgage statement. And the second would be a utility bill. So electric, water, trash, or gas. Um, just know that um, the enrolling parent or guardian name address has to be on the proof and it has to be dated within the last 30 days. And lastly, if there is any custody documentation that um, we need to have on file, you can submit that at that time as well.
All righty, I'm going to take over with the health information just to highlight a couple of things on this page. Um, there are two separate health information documents that are required to register a student for kindergarten. Um, Virginia, Code of Virginia actually requires a physical exam to be on hand um, prior to starting kindergarten. For the 24-25 school year, the kindergarten physical must be dated on or after August 26, 2023. So it's actually stipulated 365 days from the first day of school. So first day of school coming up is August 26, 2024. Um, so I would encourage, you know, go ahead and make appointments now or as soon as you can. Um, offices get super busy the end of August. Um, there, on the next slide, there will be a QR code that lists some resources that might help with this, including immunizations, um, the, pub the Public Health Department, Old Town Medical Center, and then some WJC immunization clinics um, might be of use, and of course, your local pediatric practices. But it's not a Williamsburg, James City County rule. It's actually, you know, it's a, it's a law and it stipulates there's no grace period. So getting that in is, is terrific. Once um, that is in place, you don't have to supply another physical. In other words, once they're enrolled with those documents, you don't have to uh, provide that again. Unless there's something that was uncovered at a physical that might be pertinent for school, then of course, you know, you bring that in and share, but you don't have to keep doing it year after year. Um, I wanted to mention our emergency card. I've got one right here. It's a two-sided card. It's not something that you have to worry about now. It would actually um, come to you in your child's, what we call first day packet, or sometimes they're available at open house. Um, but it's a two-sided card and just, you know, keep in mind if you can add as many contacts on it as possible, some people that could help reach you in case of illness or an emergency. Um, and then if numbers change throughout the school year, please do let us know because it is a long time between August and June. So sometimes phone numbers do change. Um, I wanted to mention specific medical needs that might um, your child might have. Some of the things I think of right off the bat that we'd like to meet with parents one-on-one -on -one before school even starts is if your child has a diagnosis of um, diabetes, type one in particular, which is insulin dependent. Um, asthma is another one. Life-threatening food allergies, particularly if they've had a history of anaphylaxis um, and or seizure disorder. You know, some of those where we need to be able to be ready on the very first day, right when they get off the bus with what we need to keep them safe. Uh, we also do have school-based, all the Williamsburg James City County Schools have school-based epinephrine in place as well as a uh, school-based inhaler. So, but those are really meant as backup and in an emergency use, we have, the, we have the authorization to go ahead and use those. And then speaking of medication, if your child is someone who needs a medication during the day, um, either a routine medication, something like a booster dose or um, an as-needed medicine, perhaps they get headaches, um, we can certainly support those. And the form with that QR code is um, that is required is on is on the health services webpage, along with <clears throat> forms to go with any of those other diagnoses that we mentioned. In addition, the local pediatric practices have copies of those forms usually as well. So those would go to um, your individual school nurse. Um, I wanted to jump over and mention briefly what we call well enough to be in school. I know it's um, a tricky thing to figure out. Nobody has a crystal ball in the morning. You wake up, I mean, kids are just like us. They feel like, eh, I don't feel good, but they might wanna go to school or they might not. And you know, particularly right now with the pollen starting up, it's, sometimes it's really hard for anyone to tease out, are we quote, well enough? Because if they are, we definitely want them here. Um, you know, if not, if if it's if particularly if they haven't had a fever the night before or within 24 hours, or if they vomited or had diarrhea, those are reasons to absolutely stay home. Another one would be if they had um, draining eyes, like particularly yellowish or greenish drainage, those are reasons to stay home. 
if you're ever in any one, you know, question and, oh, I don't know if they should go, you can always call. Every school is staffed with a registered nurse and we're always happy to help kind of tease that out. And again, nobody has a crystal ball. Sometimes kids get sick during the day and that's just how it is. We do our best though, um, keeping in mind infection control. And one of the things um, jokingly thought, if there's one thing you can do over the summer is to teach your child to cough all the way into their elbow. We make a big deal over not coughing over your elbow, but right into your elbow. So it catches the, so it catches the germs of whatever they're coughing. It's just a habit that they can get into. And that will be, that would be amazing. Um, the only other thing I was going to mention is we have something called kindergarten screening. Not anything you need to sign up for, but it's something that happens in October for all kindergartners and actually all new students to the school, um, especially in grades one through three, um, where we look at five areas and the respective disciplines oversee that. One is speech, um, fine motor skills, overseen by our occupational therapy department, gross motor skills, vision, Okay, and hearing all things that will could impact them in the classroom. All kids will get that screening. Nothing you have to sign up for or do, and you would hear back as you know if there was any results that was concerning about, hey, what's going on with this little kiddo? So, I think that's all I have for right now. And these are some of the walk-in immunization clinics that we have. Uh, scheduled coming here in June, July, and August. Um, so just wanted to share that information as well with you. Yeah, that QR code, I tried it out. It really works well. It goes right to the health services page, which has a lot of the forms that you might be needing and, and more information about everything we just talked about. Okay, let's talk about getting to school and getting back home at the end of the day. So many children are super excited about a school bus and riding the school bus. So our, we have a system in place for our kindergarten students across the school division, and it's the kindergarten card system. So every kindergarten student will be issued a card that will be attached to their backpack, and that card includes important information about their transportation their bus run number, their name, the school that they attend, their bus stop, and their teacher's name. And it's very important that that tag be adhered to their backpack and that it stay there. Um, should it become lost, please notify your school right away so that the school can replace the tag. Along with the tag, every parent will receive three matching cards. And so when a, when a driver approaches a kindergarten student's bus stop in the afternoon, the driver will need to see an individual at the bus stop who has a card that matches each kindergartner's backpack tag. So the adult or an older sibling who is authorized by the parent to receive a child off the bus must meet the driver with that tag. Um, that's very, very important. Every family is issued three so that, again, should one get lost or if you need to authorize a neighbor to um, receive your child from the bus, a grandparent or someone else, you have uh, cards to share with the people that you select. And again, if one gets lost, you need a replacement, please don't hesitate to contact the school right away. Um, but that backpack card system is very important to the safety of our students. Um, our drivers, just like our teachers, occasionally require substitutes. And so that ensures that substitute drivers who may not recognize the adults who routinely meet children at the bus can be assured that the every adult meeting a child is in fact authorized to um, receive that child off the bus. So next slide. Many of our children um, participate in before and after school care with some of our local child care businesses in the community. And so this slide just shows you several of the community child care businesses that do provide um, transportation to and from the schools that are listed in the morning and the afternoon. So many children go 
um, to these child care centers, school aged children, and are there in the morning. And these um, businesses will bring the children to the schools at the arrival time, and then they will come back to school in the afternoon and proceed through our dismissal process and collect the students. Um, we do ask that if your child is going to um, enroll in a child care in child care for before or after school, that either at open house or in the first days of school, that you communicate that with your child's teacher so that we um, know who to expect um, at the end of the day. And any time that there is a change, um, a change in the family schedule, perhaps a parent is going to pick up a child after school. Um, again, we would ask that you just communicate any changes related to transportation with your child's teacher and with the school daily as that occurs so that we are aware of your child's needs and can continue to work hard to keep them safe. Next slide. So a third um, after school, uh, before or after school um, opportunity for some of our children in our elementary schools is the James City County Rec Connect program. The Rec Connect program runs at many of our elementary schools and I believe also at several of our middle schools. Um, the County uh, Parks, and Rec Parks and Rec Department runs a program at which um, children can be dropped off at enrolled children in the program can be dropped off at the elementary school as early as seven o'clock and they stay on site under the supervision of Parks and Rec Department staff members and then they transition to their classrooms um, at the um, start of the school day and then at the end of the school day if they are enrolled in the Rec Connect program or the after school program part they will transition from their classrooms to the Parks and Rec program and again are supervised by Parks and Rec staff. Um, so we do want to emphasize that although these wonderful programs um, are located within our school buildings and facilities, um, school division employees do not um, staff these programs. This is a um, James City County Parks and Rec Department program. So um, Enrollment in the program, confirmation of enrollment in the program is a separate process from enrolling your child in a WJCC school. And so if you are interested in that program, we encourage you to use the QR code and um, go to the county's website to get more information. We do know that they have started enrolling for the Parks and Rec program for the 2024-25 school year already. And at some schools, those programs fill up very quickly. So if you think you might be interested, we encourage you to um, go ahead and look into that. All right, next slide. So they're at school and um, they're going to get hungry. Um, we The student meal program at um, several of our schools and the schools that all participate in the community eligibility provision program which is a federal program, um, provides free meals to all students enrolled at that school. Um, and that includes breakfast and lunch. Um, so you can see that of our elementary schools, that includes Matthew Whaley, James River, Norge, Laurel Lane, and DJ Montague. Does not require any additional registration or paperwork for the students at those schools to um, receive free breakfast and or lunch. Um, at our other um, four elementary schools, um, so that would be JBB, Stonehouse, Matoka, and CBB, um, you parents who um, want to um, learn more about our student meal program, they can use the QR code and um, go to our website to get more information about student meals. So it's program that's available at an increasing number of our schools. And each year information is posted to our website um, to inform families of any additional schools that may be participating in the program, along with um, our meal prices and the um, monthly uh, lunch calendars. So speaking of which, lunch calendars, uh, actually breakfast and lunch calendars are available on our website. And you can see an example of that by using the QR code. So you can see 
um, the information that is provided because we know sometimes children want to be able to pack their own lunch. We want um, our children to consume healthy meals every day. And so sometimes that means knowing what is being served for the school lunch and knowing that a child may not care for those options and may want a different choice. So we encourage our families to um, review those menus at least once a week. Um, Mr. Shoa, do you want to tell um, our families about how the other ways they can connect with our menus? Sure. Um, so we just recently launched within the year uh, the WJCC Schools app. Um, so you can get it on the Google Play Store or the App Store, the Apple App Store. Um, and you just search WJCC Schools um, in the search, or we've also linked it in the chat um, to download um, the app. Not only do you get um, student meals on the app, but you also will be able to communicate back and forth with your child's teacher throughout the school year um, and get a lot of information that's happening, um, not only at the division level, but also at the school level. Um, we would also use that to send notifications for inclement weather and, and things like that. Um, so it's a, and you don't need to necessarily have a student in the division in order to download the app. It doesn't require any sort of login unless it's the, the parent teacher uh, communication piece. Um, otherwise, any community member can download the, the app and, and take a look at many of the things that we have on our public facing website, but also in this convenient way. All right, um, moving on to a, a topic that um, Mrs. Wells has already raised, which is the importance of attendance. And we simply cannot underscore the importance to, for our children as learners and as um, in their social development for attending school um, to the greatest extent possible. Um, as Mrs. Wells noted, there are definitely times when our children um, do need to stay home um, and parents can are positioned to make that um, decision. Certainly, if it is a health um, question, you can we encourage you to reach out to your child's school if you want any additional information to help make the decision. But from kindergarten, um, from the very first day, uh, we want to um, start them with the mindset that attending school is very, very important. And so we encourage families to make school attendance uh, a priority to the greatest extent that is, that is possible and to encourage your children to um, look forward to the day, um, to focus on what they're going to learn, the positive social interactions and friendships that they're going to develop as they um, get to know their classmates and their teachers and understand the importance of school. However, when it is necessary for your child to stay home um, for whatever reason, we do ask that you send a note to your child's teacher on the next day that they return to school. Um, as you are probably aware, um, attendance is extremely important um, for our schools and we are required to document student attendance. And so that family communication is extremely important and helps us to understand um, when children are out and how we can best support them. So if your child is going to be out in advance and you know that as well, then um, certainly again, communicating with your child's teacher may allow the teacher to give you some information that you might want to know how to keep your child prepared to transition right back into learning when they return to school. So we do have a Williamsburg policy that allows us to excuse up to 10 days of absence, but that um, the criteria for excusing absences includes if we do have to have that written communication from families. You'll get more information about attendance and about communicating when your child is absent as we um, enter into the new school year, but we just really do want to underscore we want your children at school every single day for all of the amazing learning opportunities that they're going to have. And so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your child's school. And so what will they be doing while they are at school? They will be very, very busy little people all day. And I, as 
um, a parent who has sent three now young men through um, school, I can tell you that as you proceed through that month, first month of school, um, you can tell how much energy they are putting into learning their new community and getting to know their new routines and making new friends because they get um, tired more and more quickly um, in the afternoon. And it's very exciting to watch how quickly they um, just really take in all of the things in their environment. So as kindergartners, each day across our nine elementary schools, our classroom teachers start the day with our students in what we call morning meeting which is a very social time for our students to um, get to know one another, to communicate with each other, work together on different um, opportunities in the classroom. It's just a wonderful community building time of the day. Um, throughout the rest of the day, they are engaged with literacy instruction. That's critically important um, for all of our learners, but especially our youngest learners, where they are continuing to develop their oral language skills, um, and they are beginning their journey, and for some, continuing their journey as um, readers and writers. So taking in all that they are learning and that they know and learning to communicate that with each other. So that's very exciting to watch how quickly our young students really start to pick up their skills and get excited about what they know and showing and sharing what they know. Our students are engaged in math instruction for an hour a day where they're working together. Um, math, um, especially in our younger grades, is very hands-on. There are many, many exciting math manipulatives and tools in our um, classrooms that our students learn to use as they are developing math concepts and um, their skills. And we take our students through what we call CRA, which is a concrete representational to abstract um, understanding of math skills. And that's so critical as they're developing their number sense and preparing for higher level math as they continue through the grades. Core science and social studies is um, very exciting and that is integrated throughout their day. And so they really love to engage with life cycle of the butterfly or learning about special um, American holidays and other holidays that are celebrated around the world. They have lunch each day, of course, um, and we'll talk a little bit about lunch when we get to our next slide. Recess, all of our um, students in kindergarten have 30 minutes of recess each day. Um, that's weather dependent, of course, so when it isn't safe, or the weather isn't such that we can take our students outside, they do get that, that very important um, play time in the classroom. And then the last component of our students' day is what we refer to as centers. And so each day they will go to a different centers course. One day a week will be PE, health and PE. Um, one day will be technology with our elementary technology teacher where they are learning um, coding and all kinds of wonderful ways they can use um, digital tools and digital skills. And they have art class once a week, music class, and they go to the library once a week. So our, again, they have very full and busy days. All right. So that brings us to how can we prepare for kindergarten? There are many, many important um, ideas to consider as a parent as you are thinking about transitioning your child um, and preparing them to transition to a full day kindergarten experience. We do encourage you to scan the QR code that will take you to a much more extensive list than what we have here that is on our website. Um, but just a few, um, I think, especially important um, ideas both um, as one who has sent three young men through kindergarten and as an educator. Um, it is important to um, think, start thinking now about the routines that you want to have in place for your child, um, both your morning routines and your afternoon up to bedtime routines. So identifying those routines that you think are best for your child and your family, determining what they are, and then um, 
setting them in place and starting to practice them. I, I would say, depending on the routine, um, even starting early in the summer so that, you know, we are, if it's particularly if it's going to be a new routine, that you're not trying to start too many new things at one time. Um, and it's really surprising how fast the, the start of school can sneak up on you. So encouraging you to think about um, particularly bedtime routines um, and when you want to start those so that they feel very natural and you've had time to do some troubleshooting around the, the routine if some aspect of it doesn't seem to be working the way you anticipated and ironing that out well before school starts. Um, the other thing that I really encourage um, parents to think about is um, practicing having your child follow some um, two to three step directions um, for just basic routines around the house that you um, feel is appropriate for them so that um, as they transition to being in a class with other students and um, transition to that receiving some instructions and direction from the teacher and then needing to be able to follow uh, two or three steps, you know, as they return to say their desk, for example, and start to work. So working on that um, can be helpful for some students. Practicing self-care activities, um, such as zipping up pants and jackets, um, blowing their nose, opening lunch containers, um, you know, Sometimes the items that they want in their lunch will require an adult's assistant, and there will be numerous adults in the school cafeteria assisting the students. But to the greatest extent that it is re reasonable um, for a child to start to develop some of those more independent habits, it helps them um, so that they can get to whatever's in that container faster if it's a container that they um, might be able to open on their own. And then, um, of course, hygiene care in the bathroom. So they're five. They're little guys. They can't do everything on their own, and they shouldn't do everything on their own. But again, you know your children best, and to the extent at which they can start to develop some independent habits, um, that's, that's fantastic. As the mother of three boys, I would say knowing which pants are really not you know, very easy for them to snap up, zip up, whatnot, um, and trying to avoid those sometimes um, for what they wear to school can, you know, just, it's all those little things um, that sometimes we don't, we don't discover until we're in the moment of difficulty. And though they might feel like they are minor to us as adults, um, they really are important to these little guys. So looking for those things in advance is great. Um, you want, we want our children to recognize their first and last name in writing, if, um, if that is reasonable. Um, not necessarily writing. Certainly, we, we would love for them to be well on their way to trying to write their first name, but we would, it's helpful if they can recognize their name. When you go into the kindergarten classroom, their names will be everywhere. And so if they can recognize especially their first name, that will help them to understand routines in the classroom and feel that pride um, of that's my name and it's on my cubby, that's my cubby. Um, so working on that um, in advance is great. Um, you can never read to your child enough. So reading aloud to your, to your child and to your children, having conversations and just really encouraging their curiosity, um, asking why asking them what they think. How do you know that? What made you think that? All of those great questions that um, you, you can um, integrate into your conversations just driving down the road. Um, but again, getting our children to um, feel confident in communicating their sense of wonder is really, really important. And so reading aloud to them, talking with them, and asking them what they think why they think what they think, um, helping them to learn to express themselves and, and be confident in, in their ideas and thoughts. And then finally, um, we all know, um, we, we've been there. It can, it, your, your mind goes to how did kindergarten, how, how did they go from being a baby swaddled in a blanket to here it is, they're, they're going off to kindergarten. Um, it seems to happen so fast. And 
Um, there are many things that we are always concerned about and aware of as adults. And we will always encourage you that if you have questions, concerns, you want more information, so you're feeling more confident, please reach out to your child's school. Um, we want to be there to support you so that you feel confident and can share the enthusiasm and the positivity with your child about school. They're going to be nervous. You're going to be nervous. Um, but to the best of um, adults' ability to really project that positivity and they're going to be new things. You're going to learn new things. It's going to take a little time, but um, helping to encourage them to be confident and see it as a wonderful opportunity um, is definitely um, the most critical um, idea I, I believe is on the list. All right, so here's a great way to get them excited about kindergarten. It's not yep. going to be family fest every day, but this <laughs> is a great way to launch it. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I, you know, I, I still have a year before my little one ends up in kindergarten. So I'm already a little nervous. But um, if you haven't heard already, we are hosting a family fest on April 26th from 3 to 730 at Berkeley Middle School. Um, feel free to come have some food. We have some food trucks we'll be giving out. Um, we'll have some raffles from local businesses and organizations. We'll have plenty of kid activities, some inflatable basketball and things like that. Also for some little guys that aren't quite ready for kindergarten, um, there'll be a little section for them as well. Um, every kindergartner is going to get a class of 2037 goodie bag, which is wild to say even out loud. Um, but it and it doesn't matter where you are in the registration process. So if you have not started the online pre-registration process, you can show up to this event and start that process. If you're halfway through and you just need to turn in some, you know, your driver's license and things like that, just those that paperwork piece of things, you can you can do that at this family fest as well and also enjoy a hot dog or some barbecue or or just enjoy some some live music. Um, so really, it, it doesn't matter where you are in the process. So come on out and and have a good time. Um, and I will also mention that we we have um, a Facebook event. So if you are on Facebook, go ahead and make sure that you uh, click interested or hopefully going. Um, and we will be releasing some information as it gets closer to the event as far as what food trucks we'll have there and such. Um, so if you haven't um, booked it in your calendar yet, now is the time to do so. Um, but we're also really proud to announce tonight, we just actually um, solidified our live music. So we will be having um, Brass Wind at the Kindergarten Registration Family Fest. They'll be performing um, starting at around um, four o'clock um, and they'll be playing up until about seven. Um, so come on out, have a good time. Um, like I said, enjoy, enjoy some food, get some, get some things done and um, it'll just be a good time for everyone. Um, now we'll, um, as we are getting ready to get to the Q and A, we did say that you would get a enter to win a swag bag for WJCC. So we're going to take the listing of all the participants that have joined us tonight and we will randomly select somebody. We will send a, uh, we will put the winner of that um, of this drawing in the email that you will receive from us, along with all the resources, a quick um, survey, giving us some feedback on this presentation, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, and now I will switch it over, and we'll do we'll open it up to the Q and A, and address some of the questions that you guys um, have dropped in the chat as well as in the Q and A section. I can jump in and um, question under health. There's a question, can students bring medication in to give to the nurse? That's a really good question. I'm glad somebody asked that. It's actually um, at the elementary level, students are not permitted to bring medication in themselves. That does change at the secondary level, but at the elementary level, an adult has to come in with the medication. Um, it doesn't have to be the parent. It could be, you know, a babysitter or something, but it does have to be an adult. Um, and frequently there's a form to sign if the doctor's already faxed it over. 
or something like that. So it helps to have that contact, also go over whether or not the med should be included on a field trip, that type of thing. It's just, it's too risky on the bus. It's for example, an inhaler, they could just puff it. Not that anybody would do anything on purpose, but that the rule is for WJC, the elementary kids can't transport meds. Um, <clears throat> the other health related question is our kindergarten students allowed to bring peanut butter food to school? And the answer is yes, it's um, peanut butter is one of a cheap protein. And sometimes it's um, it's the only thing some kids will eat. It doesn't go bad during the day, but we are super um, conscientious and we are, consider ourselves what we call allergy aware schools um, because there's more allergies than of course peanut butter, there's dairy and fish and soy and different ones. So we try to make sure that staff is aware um, of who is allergic to what as the kids move throughout the day. Um, <clears throat> we do, now I don't know that it's exactly the same in every school, but you can always have a conversation with your child's nurse or principal. Um, but, you know, sometimes if there's a severe nut allergy in a classroom, we will ask that the uh, families in that classroom, please not pack peanut butter to be eaten as a snack in the classroom because of the chance of touching and then touching surfaces and then that protein can be spread to somebody who's allergic, but they can certainly pack that and have that in the cafeteria. So there's some different little nuances and differences throughout the division, um, such as nut-free table. That's a frequent question that I receive. Um, that is something we can establish if you're, but a lot of times parents of students with a severe nut allergy are okay with them sitting with their peanut butter eating peers. Maybe they put a student in between them and make sure we teach about not sharing food and that type of thing. So it's allergy aware. Um, I hope that answers the question about, oh, I know one other thing I was gonna say about allergies. So on the back of this emergency card is a spot to put allergies. Um, this emergency card is great, and it, it's an opportunity to provide a lot of information about food in particular, you know, allergies pretty much would go on there, as well as intolerances, food intolerances, which is different than a food allergy. Um, but this comes back in, okay, and then it goes through a little process, and then it comes to the school nurse, and there's hundreds of them, and this, this is great. We make we, the, the process is then that they, this information is transferred from to our, a system called Cafe Enterprise, where um, it will pop up um, on the screen if someone looks the child up to see what allergy they might have. Um, but also the first line thing right out of the gate on August 26th is for you to make sure your teacher, <clears throat> your child's teacher has been made aware of the fact that they can't have cow's milk, for example, or peanut butter. So so that the, those people that are receiving the kids right away, especially the little tiny, the, you know, five and six-year-olds, um, we need to know right away in addition to this piece, if that makes sense. Lots of little efforts to keep kids safe in school. Okay, there were some questions related to um, screening and getting to know um, your child's school better. Um, again, we don't screen um, our rising kindergarten students. Um, so if you have specific questions about your students' um, readiness for kindergarten, um, anywhere along their growth continuum, uh, again, we would encourage you to reach out to your child's school um, and let them know that you would like to talk to someone and learn a little bit more about um, the expectations for kindergarten so that um, you can gather the information you need as a parent to make the decision for what is right for your child. Um, likewise, if you want um, to visit your child's school, um, the spring is very, very busy in our schools, at all of our schools. Um, but we do encourage you to reach out to your child's school and to inquire about scheduling a visit. Um, you may get an opportunity to meet an administrator or it may be a school counselor who leads um, the visit. The other opportunity that you will have is um, once 
um, the registration of most students has happened um, by early summer, then our schools have that information. They know who the students are registered, who the students are who are registered to attend their school, and they will start reaching out to families specifically who are registered at their schools and give them school specific information. Many of our schools host um, summer events for rising kindergartners and their families because we know how very important it is for not only for the children, but for the parents to have an opportunity to come in, meet the administrative staff, meet the teaching staff, get a chance to see what the classrooms look like, spend some time in the building so that well before that first day, they have an understanding of what it will look, what the school will look like, what, what it will be inside. Maybe what does the playground look like? So as we get closer to the summer, um, our schools will start reaching out to the enrolled families of their rising kindergartners with more school specific information. And I also believe that at the Family Fest, um, our schools will have tables where you will have an opportunity to talk to representatives from the school that you are zoned for. So we certainly encourage you to start that contact and communication early um, so that you feel confident with the information you have. And speaking of communication, there was a question about um, weekly communication from kindergarten teachers to um, parents and guardians. And yes, um, we have multiple means and modes of communication that our teachers use to keep our families and students' guardians informed of what they're learning, how they're responding to school, um, how they're developing along those um, progressions of skills and concepts. And so you will be kept informed of, formed of what your child is learning. You should expect not only digital communication um, from your child's teacher and from the school, but you'll also have a folder that will probably go back and forth um, in the backpack, if not daily, um, weekly, where you will also get um, your child's work so that you get to see some of the activities that they are doing in school and getting to see the feedback um, for how the child completed or interacted with the activity. And all of that information coupled with the communication you'll be getting from the teacher will help keep you informed as to what they are learning. And off, most teachers also provide ideas for how families can extend learning at home through activities that are suited for home or um, for the community. Um, one of the other questions that we had was related to the, um, the kindergarten card system, tag system for the buses. Um, if a child loses their bag tag, please call the school right away so that the school can um, secure another tag for your child and it can go on the backpack um, as quickly as possible. So again, reaching out to your school's office with a phone call, to let them know, hey, the bag, the tag um, has been lost um, or potentially damaged and we need a new one and they are going to help you with that um, immediately. If you have extenuating circumstances and you need additional um, bus cards to match your child's bag tag, again, please notify your child's school. Um, three seems seems to be the, the just right number for most students, but we know every child's situation is different. So if you need a different, if you need additional cards, then please uh, let your child's school know. Um, <clears throat> and this year, um, our students do take their tablets home. Um, we are always assessing the um, suitability of the devices that now that we are one-to-one -one, that we provide with our grade level um, students. And so it is possible that um, the, our kindergartners may have a different device next year, we're not sure, um, but rest assured that as you start the school year, you will get, um, again, a lot of information from your child's teacher and from your school about the expectations for, for the device. And then you can communicate um, your decision for how the student uses the device at home as well. I think I pulled many of them and trying to watch the chat. Um, I 
One of the questions I saw was about school lunches. Um, there are no restrictions to what students can take. I maybe, I maybe Mrs. Wells already answered this. There are no restrictions to what students um, can bring in their lunch. Again, our schools are allergy aware schools. So, you know, we want to make sure that our students are, are just very aware of those healthy and safe eating habits. Um, if your child has a nickname, then please let, a, as you start the registration process, I believe there is a place on the electronic registration um, form for nicknames so that your child's school and teacher are very aware of your child's nickname. Um, addressing children by their name every day is very important. So we certainly want to um, make sure that we are referring to them by the nickname that you have selected for them. Um, but again, that is a communication with the, with the child's um, school to make sure that that's in place. I just want to point out, I saw a question on there about um, if students are already in Bright Beginnings, do they still have to go through the physical resident birth certificate part of the registration process? And I want to again say yes. Any current Bright Beginnings students who are attending kindergarten for next year, they do have to complete the whole full registration process. And I see a question about um, ReConnect happening at the school. Um, so ReConnect um, provides child is a program, a James City County Parks and Rec program that provides um, before and after school child care for students who are enrolled specifically in that program. So um, again, though it is um, held at the elementary school, um, the Williamsburg James City County School System does not manage or staff that program. So we provide the space for the County Parks and Rec Department to hold their program. So that is a separate registration and enrollment process. If you are interested in learning more about um, the before and after school program that the um, ReConnect program provides in our schools, we do encourage you to go to the James City County um, government website, where if you scroll to the Parks and Rec Department, you'll be able to get more information. You can also use the QR code that is um, embedded in this um, presentation that you'll receive a copy of, but it is completely separate. So if you enroll your child in the Parks and Rec program in ReConnect, you, and you need to drop your child off at 7.30 so that you can make it to work on time. You would provide transportation, obviously, to the um, program in the morning. When it is time for students to um, transition to their classrooms, the Parks, park and, rec, parks and Rec staff will um, escort them to their classrooms. So they, they support the transition. Most of the um, Parks and Rec programs are housed in the cafeteria and gymnasiums at the elementary schools. And so as it um, draws closer to the time for the school day to start, um, the Parks and Rec staff will pull the children into the cafeteria, allow them to gather their backpacks and other belongings that need to go with them upstairs to their classrooms, give them a few minutes to um, maybe settle back down if they've been involved in the physical activity in the gym or out on the playground so that they're ready to transition to their day of learning. So busing would not happen in that in that situation. But great questions. I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, one question about um, full day uh, kindergarten. It is full day kindergarten. Um, and I there were a couple questions in regards to what time and, and such. I'm dropping in the chat now a link to the school zones and hours page on our website. You can, if you don't know what school your your child is zoned for, you can search it there with your um, street street name, um, and you can also see the times um, of the school day as well. I know we are right at seven o'clock now. Um, 
lots of questions that we 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 didn't even really scratch the surface and so we'll we'll go through those questions and try to get as much as many of those answers over to you in the email like i said um that we will send out um we will also again include in that email a quick um, survey as long as well as the announcing the winner that gets the little swag bag, the WJCC swag bag. Um, I hope to see all of you uh, at the Family Fest. It'll be a good time. Um, like I said, feel free to come anytime between 3 and 7.30 or come the entire time. Um, but with that, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, and again, if you guys um, have any questions after this as well, you just visit wjccschools.org and then click the contact us button on the top navigation, and that will be routed to the appropriate uh, department or individual. Um, again, thank you guys for your time, um, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening and get those little ones in bed. <laughs> all right, have a good one. Bye.